Well, today I have a sermon uh, that I would like to do for you, and it, it's, this is an old sermon. I have preached this sermon many times throughout my, my career as a pastor, and I just felt with the things that are going on and where we see things in the world today, uh, especially today, that it was a good time to be reminded. You know, I don't like to repeat sermons, so I, and I think it's funny because I don't keep all my notes. I throw them away when I get home. They're gone. I do not repeat a sermon, all right? So though I've preached on this, I've never preached on it the way I'm going to preach on it today, and I'll never preach on it this way ever again. So today I want to teach on an old word. I mean, hey, let's face it, this word's been around for 2,000 years, but it's fresh and new even today. So turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 15. And this sermon is entitled, In Christ We Are to Redeem the Time. And I think that this is very important. Ephesians 5 and 15, that's where we're going to start. This is a word for every age, okay? However, I truly believe that this, this word has no better time to be realized than today. How many of you out here in the audience, how many of you out there on internet land, you know, how many of you folks out there have a cell phone? Some of you are watching me on a cell phone right now. Others of you are using a computer and you're on the internet. We're connected to everything, everywhere, all the time. We have so much information in our hands right now and so many people that we can be in contact with that that is primarily what many people's lives look like. I love going to a restaurant. I don't love going to restaurants, but I love when I'm at a restaurant watching people. How many of you watch people? How many of you out there are people watchers? Okay. I love to watch people. You're at a restaurant and you've got four or five, six people sitting around the table with you and everybody there has their cell phone out texting somebody that's not at the table. What's really weird is when you find out that two of them are literally texting each other and they're sitting across from each other. Something's wrong. And this is what this word is talking to. Because we have become wasters of time. And I don't think we realize how much time we're wasting. I want you to think about this. You know, when I was a kid, when I was a little boy, we had a black and white TV. Now, for those of you who are in, younger in the audience, you're probably like, black and white TV? Yes, yes. Monochrome did not come out until the 1970s. How many of you remember that? right? 1970s. All of a sudden, the peacock was in color, okay? And so I, I laugh because, you know, before my generation, all they had was radio. So they listened and had to imagine with their minds. So we had to look and see things in black and white and put color to it, okay? Today, boy, we've got so much. And how many of us spend hours in front of that boob tube, Let's face it, when it's on, you don't even have to be watching it. It's on and you walk through the room. What happens? As soon as you walk in, it's like you lock on. This thing has programmed us that when it's on, we have to give it all our attention, right? And many of us put hours and hours and hours of every day into the television, into the internet, into our phones, because it's our lives now. No, it's not a life. That's a lie. We need to begin redeeming the time. If you're texting and talking with people who are out there, 500, 600, you don't even know where they are because they've friended you on Facebook or whatever, you know, Snap or TikTok or whatever this stuff is. How many of those people do you really know? Oh, well, I have 500 friends. No, you don't. A friend is someone who comes to your house and sits at your table and eats dinner with you. A friend is someone whose life you've invested in. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today, is learning that we need to be redeemers of time. Just as Jesus Christ is a redeemer of time, time means nothing to him anymore because he's into our lives. He is the ultimate redeemer. From Ephesians 5 and 15, we read this word. We're going to read through 18. It says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. 
Four little verses. Four little verses that I want us to understand. God wants us to restructure our lives. And in Christ Jesus, he has a way that he wants us to walk. So I want to begin. I'm going to tear down these verses. I'm going to start with 15 and 16, and then we're going to walk into some of the other scriptures to show us what's being spoken here. He says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. So in other words, we need to understand God is telling us that there are two different types of people in this world. There are those who are unwise and those who are wise. Which would you rather be in, the wise group or the unwise group? I think most of us would say, oh, but I'm a wise person. Are you really or are you getting wise? Okay, because I'm going to tell you right now, when we were children, we thought as children. But when we became adults, we are supposed to put away childish things. Amen? How many of you still carry your toys around in your pocket? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We have allowed these things to entrap us. And we need to remember that we are to be in charge of our lives and the situations around us. Because whatever we give our time to, we have made our God. Whoa, that's a little harsh, isn't it? No, it's not. That's the truth. Whatever we give our time, we have made our God. That's not a lie. That is a truth. And we need to redeem our time. Now, can we have these tools? Yes. There's nothing wrong with having a tool, okay? A carpenter couldn't build a house without a hammer and a saw, right? I mean, those are two prerequisites for being a carpenter. We, too, have to have our tools. And I'm going to say this right now. I love this book. I love this book. But it is so much easier to have that little electronic device in my pocket that I can pull it out, hit a button, and my Bible comes up on it just like that. It's just that much easier to carry. And there are some of you here right now that your Bible is your phone, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with that. It's a tool. Use it as a tool. But how many of us carry a hammer around all day long, hitting everything with it? You don't. (laughs) This is what we're getting about. We need to be wise and not unwise. Don't let this thing drive your life. Use it to drive your life. Use it as a tool in driving your life. Okay, it's a tool. Don't let it become an idol. There's a difference. And that's what God is speaking to us here. And he says to us from verse 16, he says, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Now, I love what it says in in several other translations. Please let us remember that the different translations all show us the nuances of what's being spoken here because what we just read says to us that we are to make the most of our time. But in other places, in other scriptures, the King James, the NIV, the NAS, it says redeeming the time. Oh, man, I love that word. I love that word. Why? Because what does the word redeem mean? The word redeem means to buy back, to repurchase, to free from what distresses or harms, to change for the better, to reform, repair, or restore, to free from a lien by payment of an amount secured, to atone for. Wow, is there some godly meaning in that word? You bet, because Jesus Christ has redeemed us throughout all time. And we need to remember that we are to be redeemers of time as well. And I think it's amazing, because what is the one thing in life that all of us have? Each and every one of us has this thing. Time. Yeah, Miss Leslie got it right. We all have time. How much time do we have? We have no idea. But how many of us are wasting that time doing things that we shouldn't be doing? How many of us are seeking after more time every day? Oh, man, if I only had more time. There's only 24 hours in a day. There's only 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in every minute. You don't get any more and you won't get any less. 
But how are we going to use them? What are we going to do with them? And this is what it's really all about, because I'm going to tell you right now, and, and in this day and age, how many people are wasting time every moment of every day when there are things we could be doing, we should be doing as the body of Christ that God calls us to do? Now, how many of us are here now in the moment, every moment of every day? What I think is funny, and I'll never forget this, I was literally... I was at a store, and these kids are walking down through, and this one young fellow, this young gentleman, he's texting, he's texting, he's texting, and he's walking, right? He's, his peripheral vision is watching his friends around him. And I saw it coming. I saw it happening. They walked him right into a steel pole because they just stayed beside him, and they're guiding him because he's doing this, and as they're walking, he's just staying between these two guys, not looking in front of him. They walked him right into a steel pole. <laughs> what do you think is happening in your life when you put all your stuff into that? Satan is walking you right into hell itself. He is walking you right into perdition because he is robbing you of life. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. How can you have life abundantly unless you're out there living it? And then from verse 16, no, 18, excuse me, I got to go back. I'm trying to do it all by memory. It says, and do not get drunk with wine, that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Wow. In other words, because yes, we all know what it means to get drunk on wine, right? We all know what it means to get drunk because something else is in control of you. Let's look at this and turn it to our lives today. Oh, but pastor, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. That's wonderful. Do you do the internet? How many of us have an IV hooked up to us from the internet? We are literally in the back of our head. There's a flipping cable, right? <laughs> We're connected at the hip with our cell phone. When it vibrates, we vibrate, trying to get it out of our pocket quick enough. We need to understand what's being talked about here. Don't let anything other than the Holy Spirit be the driving force that is in you. For as he drives us, he will bring us to the place of righteousness, of rightness with God. And in that, we will find the victory of life and life abundantly and bring it on to others. Oh, my heavens, Father, thank you for this life you give us. You know, how many of you woke up today and said, oh, man, it's cold? How many of you woke up today and said, oh, the sunshine and it's beautiful outside? I know I did because yesterday was crappy. That wind and that snow... But man, I got up today and it's a new day and I looked outside and yeah, I was still warm from the coal fire in my cellar and I looked outside and I said, oh baby, it's a good Sunday. The sun is shining and as bright as it is outside, I know when we get into the fellowship, it's going to be even brighter in there because the sun will shine in our hearts. Amen. Amen. And that's the way it needs to be every day, even in those days when it's windy and blowing and snowing and raining and all that stuff that comes with life. Because inside, the sun is shining. Let's redeem the time. Let's get it right with God. Let's pour out the Word of God into the lives of our friends and our families and strangers. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it is night, but the night is just about over. Because daybreak is coming. The Lord is coming again. Normal's not coming back, but Jesus Christ is. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, pastor's fired up. And I pray you are too. Because as redeemers of time, guess what that means? Time doesn't tell us. We tell time. Understand that. Because only God can control time. But when we are in God and he is in us, time is on our side. It's not against us. It is for us. May we remember, redeem the time. 
It's yours. Name it. Claim it. Believe it and receive it in Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. And I thank you that we can be reminded that, yes, we're in this world, but we are not to be of this world. We're to be different from this world. So, Lord God, I pray that each and every person who is hearing my voice even now hears not me, but they hear you. Because, Lord God, you are the one who empowers us. You are the light of the world. You are the power of the world. You are the sustainer of all things. For from you all things came, and to you things shall return. And may we remember, Lord, that when we return unto you, it is not to be less, it is to be more. And in that, Lord God, may our hearts shine that truth. May we redeem the time, because time is no longer a constraint to us. Time is not an enemy. Time, time is our friend when we allow you to use us in time for the times in which we live. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. You have been watching a Bible teaching from the Heart of Christ Church. You can find us on the web at www.theheartofchristchurch.com. If you have found benefit in listening to this message, you can send us an email from our contact page, or if you would like to donate or write to us, do so at P.O. Box 1011, Quentin, P.A., 17083.